Hey, it's Justin Nye from Regenerative Designs. In this video, I'm going to talk about water and the importance of water in the garden. I'm going to show you a method to catch water, spread it out across your backyard, and soak it into the soil so that when you don't have water, the water will be stored for the plants to access it. And the method I used is what's called a swale on contour, which means that it's on a level part of the land. So what I did was I used an A-frame, which I may show you how to use in another video, to find out where that level part of the land is. And then I dug out a trench along that level part of the land, which would allow the rainwater to fall into the trench, fill up, and because it's level across the entire length of the yard, will spread out, fill up, and then spill over where I want it to go. And what that does is s allow the water to settle for a longer period of time on the soil and therefore infiltrate the soil, go down deep, and recharge the underground water table and keep that water stored in the soil. That helps improve the soil biology and uh, because water is life, uh, without it we can't grow plants, we can't grow microorganisms in the soil that help the plants grow. So it's very important in uh, designing any garden. The first element you want is, uh, is your water catchment and storage. Alright, so now I'll show you what this looks like. If we come down here, we can see that we've got this garden path. Now this garden path is the trench I referred to that is laid out on the level part of the land. So this part of the path that I'm looking at here is the same level of, as the path across the entire length of the yard. So that when the rain comes down, it's going to sit there and spread out. So what I did was I dug out this trench and filled it up with a gravel material so that we get a dual function out of this water harvesting element. It's, as, as we know, we're capturing water but it also acts as a path that we can walk on. And because it's gravel, that'll allow some of the water to fill up and, and stay in there and sink down. Um, and then what we have on the other side, you'll see that we, the yard is slightly sloping from the house back to the fence. There's always some slope on land, even though it may appear to be quite level. There's always some degree of slope however small. So what we want to do is put our path in an, in an area where the water is going to flow from the uphills down into the path as well as the rain water falling directly on it and to prevent the water from then spilling out and continuing down further down the slope towards the fence I created this mound which is the soil that was removed from the trench. So we've dug down about 10-15 centimeters into the earth. We've taken that earth and we've shifted it to this mound on the down slope. And then what we can do is plant into that mound and we've done that here with a number of trees. We've got a um, uh, guava here. This is a strawberry guava, and you can see it's been planted on this mound. And uh, we've got a few. We've got some rocket down here. Now, the reason we do that is because the most trees like to have access to water, but they don't like to be sitting in water because it'll rot the roots. So being on this mound allows it to sit up a bit higher and access the water that would have uh, filled up and sunk down into the earth. And because, again, we've got a bit of a slope here, the water with gravity is going to shift this way underneath the mound. And that way the tree is not sitting in, uh, in water and the roots won't rot, but it has access to the water uh, that's stored under in the soil when it needs it. And uh, again, that helps us during times when we don't have a lot of rain in our dry season and, um, and, and creates the, allows the garden to be much more resilient 
uh, in, in times of, of uh, low rainfall. And um, in addition, rainwater uh, also, because it falls through the atmosphere, brings down uh, nitrogen and other nutrients with it. So you're not only getting um, water, you're getting fertilizer uh, in the soil where it's, again, where it's needed. Uh, you, rainwater, of course, is, is better for that reason than tap water, which contains chemicals depending on, you know, your local water supply. Um, and it's free. Okay, now we're at the other end of the garden, the other end of the swale path. And I'm going to explain what I've done here with a little tiny dry seasonal pond that I've created. So, as I mentioned, this swale slash path is, uh, has this mound which will prevent the water from spilling out further down slope. However, at once the swell does fill up, if we get enough rain, we do want to have a method or a way for that rain to get away. We want to be able to direct it where we want it to go. So the way I did achieve that was by creating a break in the mound on the path and that's what I've done here. So you can see there is no mound on this side of the path. So the water will fill up the entire length of this path. And as it comes up to the top of the mound, because this area is lower, it will spill over down slope. And so then what I've put down slope is this small depression in the ground that I dug out with some hand tool, spade, and shovel. Filled it up with some uh, bentonite clay to help retain a bit of the water because there's not a very clay soil here. It's quite a sandy loam. And what that'll do is in the when we do get rain in the summer, it'll fill up uh, and allow the water to settle and slowly percolate into the ground. Same idea as the swale. Uh, it creates a long-term um, water reservoir for the plants to access for growth and uh, otherwise that water would just um, spill away down slope run off the top of the grass and into the neighbor's yard when what we want to do is uh, catch the water as much as we as of it as we can we want to spread it out the entire length of the the garden and we want to sink it in uh, so we don't lose that valuable resource so this pond will be fed by this swale it will, the water will spill over into it, uh, as well as the rainwater that falls directly on it. And you can see, as a result, everything that's been planted around this small seasonal pond is uh, growing very, very lush. And uh, the very, very minimum requirement for watering with a hose or uh, drip irrigation or anything, this is all uh, watered primarily with rainwater that's been harvested by our swale path and our small seasonal pond. So yeah, a garden, uh, a swale in your garden is an effective method for catching rainwater and storing that rainwater in the soil. It's a very important design element. Uh, designing this into your garden before planting any plants is, is key. It's, a, um, it's like the infrastructure of your garden and if you design um, the water capture uh, elements early on um, it will carry you through for the life of the garden and provide continuous benefit and then you can design the rest of the garden where the plants go based on um, the pattern of the landscape um, and where you've established the infrastructure so very crucial to have this design in your garden up front so you can reap the long-term benefits what do you think? Is this a method that you'd like to use in your garden um, to catch uh, rainwater and store it in the so soil? Does it make sense to you? If you've got any questions about how it works or how you can implement this in your garden, uh, just leave your comments and your questions below. And uh, like this video if you found it interesting. And also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to get more videos that talk about these sorts of things. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll be notified whenever I post a new video so you can't miss out.